Did you take your vitamin C this morning? Echinacea, folic acid or fish oil? Have you had acupuncture, a remedial massage or seen a herbalist? If you have, you are certainly not alone. It's called alternative or complementary medicine, a booming industry worth at least $2 billion a year. Its products and therapies are used by more than half the population. Yet nobody can say for sure they work, and if they do, why? Even the experts seem divided. Some say science should keep an open mind, others that it's all in the mind. Mere witchcraft, a waste of money, and maybe even downright dangerous. <laughs> You don't need a crystal ball to tell that this is a big business. And at the rate it's growing, Australians will soon be spending more on alternative pills and alternative therapies than they do on conventional medicine. What's this Come on. Wheat grass juice. Wheat grass juice. Yeah, it helps build your body up and clear the toxin from your body. This is the Mind, Body and Spirit Festival in Melbourne recently. A sort of medical convention for the unconventional. Got a sinus problem? Prescription antibiotics can't hold a candle to this treatment. The medical profession can't pretend that this is not happening. It is happening. The revolution is here. I chose to submit myself to William Twofeather, a traditional Apache medicine man. Yeah. I don't like taking pills or potions, but Two Feather asked me to swallow nothing more than the extraordinary idea that sound, tone and vibration can repair the ravages of a long journalistic life. It'll be an unusual and an extended treatment. Time enough to ponder whether I'm entering the twilight of rationality or the new dawn of modern medicine. Mark Keary has advanced kidney cancer. 18 months ago, he was dying and there was nothing conventional medicine could do to save him. By rights, he should be dead. I had a seven centimetre tumour in the kidney and I had secondaries in both sides of the lung. So I went to the doctors and I said, what are my chances of survival? And they said, you've got a 10% chance of lasting five years. Words can't describe the sense of being alone when a doctor tells you that you're going to die very soon. Mark was at the height of his career in clothing, a multi-millionaire and controller of a fashion empire. The cancer was aggressive and widespread. Despite the best medical attention, even in the United States, there seemed to be no stopping it. It was kind of all bets were off, because I, when I was in New York, they said we give you six to 12 months to live. You were basically a dead man. Mm. Huh? It's not an uncommon story. When modern medicine can do no more, the patient seeks unconventional help. And I kept, I had given up actually, hadn't I? You have at some stage given up. Mark has created a virtual industry, an industry that he believes keeps him alive. There's Dr. Choi, his acupuncturist. So today, Dr. Stronger Leg. Breathing in. And visualising beautiful white light. And there's Pei, his Reiki master and colour therapist. Just feeling all the energy draining out of the head, the neck and the shoulders. And Kate, his full-time chef, who ensures Mark gets only the very best organically grown nutrition. The name of the game when you're very, very sick is to increase the energy to stop the disease from spreading through your body. It's very simple. It's not a science. All you're about, that means more rest. Don't over-exercise, don't drink too much, eat the right foods. So how much has he gained? He's gained 15 kilos. 15 kilos? Yeah. Mark now believes that these alternative therapies really work and that he is the living proof. You know, the Chinese believe that everything improves slowly, slowly. And I believe that given enough time, the body can heal itself. 
So with his diet, with his Chinese medicine, with his meditation, uh, and the fact that he's got an extra year than he was promised, uh, there could well be something in this. In particular, if he puts uh, the healthy diet together with uh, lifestyle changes like meditation, group support, uh, we know from science that he will do better than a cancer patient that doesn't do that. Cancer specialist and surgeon Professor Avni Sally is head of the School of Integrative Medicine at Melbourne Swinburne University. Here is a man of science embracing alternative ways. Is there a diet that could actually kill cancer cells, for instance? We definitely know that there are certain substances in certain foods that can kill cancer cells. Is there a diet that can actually kill cancer cells? No diet that can kill cancer cells. More and more, the argument over alternative medicine has become a debate where experts disagree. Professor John Dwyer, a respected immunologist and consumer watchdog, represents the case for the negative. Iridology, homeopathy, reflexology, a number of these procedures are based on zero science with lots of evidence to suggest that they couldn't possibly do what's claimed. Because there's no end to the myriad of fraudulent claims out there that take money out of people's pockets and occasionally stop them from getting proper treatment and proper diagnosis. This is a form of extraction. This is how we extract things from the client's body. That Still the under the spell of Two Feather and his lovely assistant Sue, one can only wonder, is there nothing at all scientifically valid in the vast landscape of alternative yeah. healing? Echinacea, fish oil, folic acid, St John's wort, evening primrose oil, glucosamine. There are hundreds of products. Every year we spend one and a half billion dollars on vitamin supplements alone, pills and potions that may just be worthless. Like most Australians, if anything, uh, I'm probably over-vitaminised. This whole rip-off industry out there that, uh, that tries to tell Australians to neutralise an unfortunate lifestyle with vitamins is thriving. But Professor Sally quotes studies from Harvard Medical School endorsing the value of vitamin supplements. And they showed very clearly that if you take a vitamin and mineral supplement per day, you will live longer than the other person that doesn't take one on a daily basis. This is science. There is absolutely no justification for continuing to voice things on people like telling them to take garlic and vitamin C and the like when there's absolutely no evidence to suggest that this is, this is in any way beneficial. What do you take? I take, well I certainly take a multivitamin mineral and we know that uh, despite the fact that Professor Dwyer doesn't think vitamin C is very good, in fact there's numerous studies and one of the most recent ones is one showing that vitamin C and E was protective against Alzheimer's disease. Have you got the coupling of the electrodes there? Professor Sali believes in keeping an open mind but a scientific focus. Once you analyse all the activity... Here his team is researching the benefits on brain function of a compound extracted from pine bark. Prescription drugs are dangerous. We know from US figures that the fourth commonest cause of death was prescription drugs. To have a life-threatening illness and one that was created as a side effect of medication, boy, it makes you think twice. It really does. And Last you know, year, Karen Phelps nearly died from medication. The former president of the AMA was prescribed a hormone preparation which produced a life-threatening side effect blood clots in her lungs. There's no question that I went through a period of being angry. I very quickly turned that around to see this as a sign that you can do more for your health. I'm lucky to have survived this. Medical science and time got me about 90% better. The other 10% was about looking at alternatives and lifestyle and that's what got me to the 100% healthy again. I suspect many of your patients are not only taking complementary medicines, but asking you about them as alternative. Today, Professor Phelps and is I an advocate of embracing alternative medicine wherever it can be proven to be effective and safe. When we're in a sticky clinical situation... She's now a medical consultant to a vitamin company and lectures her own profession on the possibilities of keeping an open mind. 
It's not about whether it's scientific or not, because I believe strongly that medical science doesn't have a monopoly on evidence. We have a vast range now of evidence around alternatives that really do work, and quite often with less risk to patients. Echinacea. Not worth the money, um, minimal effect. St John's wort. Good antidepressant, but I don't think it should be available without prescription. Homeopathy. Anti-science. Millions of Australians follow it. Anti-science. Fish oil. Jury's out. Glucosamine. Uh, it's good science to suggest that uh, along with anti-inflammatory medications that can help people with osteoarthritis should be available widely to people with that problem. Folic acid. Uh, folic acid is, is worthy of recommendation to the population. You take it yourself? I take it myself. Well, I think it's good how they pop it smaller, so proportionally makes your bottom look sort of smaller. Against the odds and the prognosis, Mark Carey is back at work and looking good in an industry where good is the only way to look. I think kind of here, yeah, I think we've got it. That's not to say he's cured. Mark Carey is still living with cancer. I really like this new gene. It wouldn't be churlish of me to observe that a lot of this couldn't be done were you not wealthy. There's a keeping Mark alive industry, isn't there? Most of the things I do each day don't cost anything. Slow walks don't don't cost anything. To sit on a hill overlooking the water and trying to think of nothing, that's free. Yeah. Okay. According to science, all things should be put to the test. The jury might still be out on William Twofeather, but for me, what set him apart from conventional care was the fact that the medicine man rang me on his mobile two days later to ask how I was going. I told him I was feeling fine. So if anybody's willing to come and help me out with this kind of work, it's very simple, I'm, I'm twofeather.net. This is a story of seeming contradictions, typified by the Apache medicine man with an internet address. The former head of the quite conservative AMA embracing other medicines and other ways. And, of course, Mark Keary. This week, still walking in the sunshine and marvelling at the world. Well, I look upon each day as a blessing, number one. So when there's a nice day like this, I want to spend as much time outside. That means... For Mark, the question of scientific proof is merely academic. For him, the fact that he's still here is proof enough. How can you know for sure that it's been these strategies that have prolonged your life, maybe even saved it? Well, how else can you argue with the fact that 18 months ago I was a walking skeleton? I mean, I'm much stronger than I've ever been. I feel healthier than I did five years ago. Now, conventional experts will say that this sometimes happens. Sometimes there is a remission. Well, isn't that a good thing? You're meant to be dead now and you're sitting here looking terrific. As, you know, as I sit here today, I'm a miracle. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.